This is part three of my three-part series on Graham's Law of Effusion. And I'm putting up at the top here what I did in the last two videos. And that is I wanted to give you a, a uh, look at the molar mass and its relationship to the rate. So the molar mass of B right up here is going to be on the bottom. I mean the rate of B is going to be on the bottom which puts the molar mass of B on the top of the other side. And the rate of A on the left being the rate of A, or the mass, molar mass of A on the other side. So this is Graham's law of effusion, but remember it also works with diffusion. So we're going to go ahead here, and I'm going to put up the shade so that we can just look at one part of this at a time. And let's start with the beginning, what we're actually given to work with. This is page 878, number two, and we're given the rate of helium being 3.8 times the rate of butane. So I'm going to take and make butane letter B, and I'm going to make helium letter A. You could reverse these and this problem would work out exactly the same, but I just wanted to use B for butane because it seemed to make a little more sense. Now we're supposed to find the molar mass of butane given those relative rates and looking on the periodic table we can get the rest of our information because we're going to have, uh, due to the given up here, we're going to have our rate of A, we're going to have the rate of B, and we're going to have the molar mass of A, which we get from the periodic chart. So we have three of the four variables. And so this guy right here is the only variable that we don't have. It's not available. So what we do now is set things up so that it'll all work. Using the periodic chart to show the molar mass of helium at 4, we can go down and look at the way this problem gets set up. And I'm going to use the shade just to kind of guide your eyes. So we're starting out with the rate of helium over the rate of butane. And when we do that, Helium is 3.8 times faster than butane because he is a slower guy. I mean, he's a faster guy. He's faster because he's smaller, both in size as well as in mass. And so when we come over here to the right side of this thing, we see that we have X grams of butane on the top which correlates to a 1 down here. Okay, this guy, these two guys correlate, and then these two guys correlate. Okay, that is our letter A, and so A has B on the bottom, and that represents helium. Now we're ready to actually solve the problem. What we can do is actually square both sides of this equation. So when we square this side, we get rid of the radical. And when we square this side, let me put the square over here too. The square, that the only thing we really have to worry about is that 3.8. And so we can square that easily with our calculator. And when we do that, the calculator is going to show us uh, 3.8 times 3.8, I'm working it out right now, I'm talking to you, 3.8 times 3.8, and that's going to give us 14.4. So, we're going to have 14.4 over 1 squared, which is 1, is equal to x grams per mole of butane. And on the bottom, we have 4.0 grams per mole of helium. And then when we finally get this thing worked out, 
we have to multiply this 14 4 by this 4. We're cross multiplying, right? Cross multiplying. So 4 times 14.4 is equal to 57.6. And that's grams per mole of butane. Because the X over here, this guy, the X grams of grams per mole of butane is actually equal to our 57.6. So that indeed the 57.6 is our grams per mole of butane. And that's how you get this little guy.